Slaughter's my name. Luke Slaughter. Cattle's my business. It's a tough business. It's big business. I've got a big stake in it. And there's no man west of the Rio Grande big enough to take it from me. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone, Civil War cavalryman turned Arizona cattleman. Across the territory, from Yuma to Fort Defiance, from Flagstaff to the Machucas, and below the border through Chihuahua and Sonora, his name was respected or feared, depending on which side of the law you were on. Man of vision, man of legend, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. I'm Irma Dutro, color stylist for O'Brien Paints. Our musical theme hardly needs introduction. Just as the many instruments blend into this symphony, so O'Brien blends many pigments into the newest fashion right colors for your home, giving more color per color. We have selected O'Brien's exciting new colors of the year after consulting many leading decorators and home furnishings experts of the country. And because all these colors are decorator approved, you are assured of rich, authentic new colors for your own home. Your nearest O'Brien paint dealer, listed in the yellow pages of your phone book, has a free color chip folder for you. He'll help you select O'Brien paints in these exclusive new colors of the year for both inside and outside your home. Stop in and see him soon. And now, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Ed Craig came to Tombstone from the east a little after I settled here. Ed was well fixed, didn't have to scratch out a living like most of us. And in his quiet, likable manner... He soon proved to be the kind of man Arizona needed. Yes, I think I can do some good for the territory in Washington if the voters want to send me there. You certainly can, Ed. Our delegate ought to be a much stronger man than some of the ones we've sent. Yeah, I got all the respect in the world for Mr. Craig Luke. But what's the sense of electing a good man to the United States Congress when he don't even have a vote after he gets there? He'll have a vote when Arizona becomes a state. Meanwhile, we need a delegate who can make the federal government understand our needs and our future. Yeah, uh, Paul Gallagher's again statehood. He says if we got it, we'd be taxed out of our boots. The way it is now, he says, we're getting a free ride. <laughs> it seems to me Paul Gallagher's again progress. <laughs> I'm afraid the main reason he's running against me is to get that free ride to Washington and back every year. <laughs> That's about the size of it. And he doesn't need the free part any more than you do. He's made a wad of money out of his saloon and his gambling room. I wouldn't know about that. All I know is that he bellowed like a branded longhorn about half the gambling license fees going into the school fund. <laughs> bellowed like a branded longhorn. <laughs> Mr. Craig, you're even starting to talk something like a Westerner. He thinks like an American, Wichita. And that's the kind of man Arizona needs for its delegate. Remember, I still have to be elected. You will be. You know, I have a personal reason for wanting to be in Washington. My little girl goes to school in Baltimore. Oh, you got a sprout? I didn't know that. Show Wichita the picture in your watch, Ed. Yeah. Well, here it is. Why, she ain't no sprout. She's a grown-up young lady. And pretty as a spotted puppy riding through a snowstorm in a little red wagon. <laughs> Thanks, Wichita. Well, I've got to be getting along, Luke. Thanks for your confidence. Well, I wish you wouldn't hurry, Ed. I have an appointment over at Gallagher Saloon. I'm, uh, buying a gold mine. What? That's right. An old prospector named Van Ling wants to sell his claim. Says it's more fun discovering gold than working to get it out of the ground. Now, now, wait a minute, Ed. I've never heard of any worthwhile gold ore in these parts. Oh? The silver. Shiflin's strike proved that, but well, I'd never gamble on gold. Well, I'd never gamble on no more silver. 
I figure old Shifflin found the only load in the Mule Mountains. Well, Van Ling took me out to his claim, and I watched him take the samples. They assayed high enough to be worth taking a chance. Well, it's your money, Ed. But you're no more a mining expert than I am. I know, I know. I just figure I can put some men to work. And if the vein's as rich as it seems to be, their families will be comfortable for life. You mean you're gonna, gonna hire on a profit-sharing basis? Uh-huh. I've got as much money as I need. And I hope what the men get, they'll sort of invest back in Arizona. Uh, what cash money wages you paying? <laughs> exactly what Luke pays you, Wichita. And if you quit him to work for me, you might not get your ranch job back if the claim peters out. Oh, I wasn't asking for no different job. I know when I'm well off, when I'm a setting on a horse. <laughs> Just don't get so wrapped up in helping people that you forget to campaign, Ed. Because you can really help them when you're Arizona's delegate to Congress. Four thousand eight hundred, four thousand nine hundred, five thousand. That's the correct amount, Mr. Craig, and you got yourself a gold mine. Fine, Mr. Van Ling. The papers seem to be in order, and I'll take care of filing the transfer. That's a lot of cash money to be carrying around Tombstone Van. Hmm? Care to leave it in my safe overnight? Well, no, I, I, I might just do that, Mr. Gallagher. Where at is the safe? In my office. Well, Craig, this will be an interesting experience for you. I think so. I think it'll be a profitable one. Well, if it is, maybe you'll quit harping on statehood for the territory. Government will take it all away in taxes. Statehood's a few years away, Mr. Gallagher. No matter which one of us goes to Washington... Uh, your ideas are too fancy for us out here, Craig. Can I have a Westerner to represent the West? We'll see what the people decide. Yeah, that we will. And no hard feelings either way. Mr. Van Ling, mm. if you change your mind about joining the mine crew, just look me up. Mm, it's pretty for certain I won't. Well, keep in touch anyway. Remember, you'll get a share of the profits. Uh, come along to my office, old-timer. Uh, All right. Give me a receipt. Electioneer, if you want to, Craig, even if this is my place. I'll let the electioneer go until I round up some miner. <laughs> hold it, hold it. Now, go ahead. It's worth laughing at. <laughs> A share of the profits. <laughs> we put it over on him real smart like, eh, Mr. Gallagher? Uh, that wasn't hard. Give me the money, Van. I get 300 of it, remember? That's right. 100 now and 200 when I know you're in Yuma. I'd, uh, I'd kind of like to stay around and watch the fun. Uh, your mouth's too big, old-timer. Well. I wouldn't want Craig to find out he actually bought that claim from me. Well, I'd never breathe a word, and you fix the papers yourself. Uh, you're going to Yuma. By the time you get there, it'll be time to start spreading the word that Mr. Edward Craig, candidate for delegate from the territory of Arizona, is pouring a fortune into a salted gold mine. <laughs> I bet you win that election, Mr. Gallagher. Eh, safest bet you'll ever make. When the people find out how little Craig knows about the West, <laughs> they'll laugh him right out of Arizona. The claim didn't look like much to me. There were traces of gold in the sandstone where old Van Ling had roughed out the start of a mine shaft, but they were shallow deposits. And they disappeared when Craig's men got to tunneling a real shaft. The crew worked with picks and shovels and drew their pay regularly. And then at last the tracks and mine carts and heavy ore-crushing equipment arrived in Benson by rail, and the whole mine force went down to mule freight it back to Tombstone. I persuaded Ed to make a trip to the mine with Wichita and me while the men weren't around. We'll make a lot more progress when we get the machinery in, Luke. Well, you'll dig deeper, faster, that's sure. Ah, uh, ain't no machinery been invented. that will put gold in the ground where there ain't none. I don't want to put it in. I, I want to get it out. Do you mind my asking how much this equipment's set in your back, Ed? Uh, about 10000 Another couple thousand to ship it. Then with your payroll, you're close to 20000 in the hole. Uh, I think it's a sound investment. Now, uh, you mind me asking you something, Luke? Nope. You're going to ask me to keep my nose out of your personal business. Not at all. <laughs> I I'm just curious about that old muzzle-loading rifle. Well, I've been studying up on gold. This antique gun's for a little experiment I want to make. Whoa. 
Go there, whoa, fella. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, Mary's Pride Mine. <laughs> you got a sign and a tunnel, anyway. I named it after my daughter. You'll be proud as punch when I telegraph her we've hit high-grade ore. Well, I've got some high-grade gold nuggets here, Ed. Hmm? I'm going to put a charge of powder in this old blunderbuss, and tamp the wadding, and use a nugget for a bullet, and fire into the rock near the shaft opening. <laughs> now we'll repeat the experiment. Well, uh, what kind of nonsense is this, Luke? Uh, you better sort of hope it is nonsense, Mr. Craig. Here goes another one. Now, let's take a look at the sandstone. Well, how about it, Ed? Look like the place where Van Ling chipped off the samples? Why, yes. That's just the way the gold flicks were, were distributed. Well, Luke, I bought a salted mine, didn't I? I'm afraid you did, Ed. You fire soft gold into soft rock, and it looks for all the world like the real thing. You was a patchy for one of the scummiest tricks a westerner can play on an easterner, Mr. Craig. I, uh, I... <laughs> when this gets out, I'm going to shape up as a fine candidate to represent the people of the West. That may have been what someone was thinking when you fell for the trick. And I doubt if old Van Ling is much interested in politics. In a moment, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone returns. With the warm weather here, young folks are champing at the bit to get outdoors and enjoy themselves. Many of them, far too many in fact, may be thinking of quitting school after this semester and going to work. If they're not graduating this June, ask them to give the matter a second thought. The grass may look very green and inviting from the classroom window, but if they don't complete high school or college... They may be looking just as longingly out the window 20 years from now, bored and disgusted with a dull or menial, poor-paying job. The good jobs, the interesting jobs, the secure jobs, and the high-salary jobs are reserved for those with college degrees. There are some pretty good jobs for high school graduates, too. But remember this. The less education you have, the less money you're likely to earn during your lifetime. You may hear of a lot of people being out of work today, but there's still a crying need for engineers, scientists, doctors, nurses, and teachers. And jobs like that require a sound, complete education. Urge the young people you know to qualify for them. They can if they stay in school and graduate. <laughs> And now, Act Two of William N. Robeson's production of Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Ed Craig had bought a salted gold mine. There wasn't any doubt about it. And if word got out, ridicule was going to ruin his chance of beating Paul Gallagher in the election for territorial delegate to the United States Congress. As I see it, gentlemen, there's only one thing I can do. Close up the mine, huh? No, Wichita. Keep digging. My men have their families in Tombstone. Some of them have brought them a long way to settle here. If people think I'm a fool, they'll just have to think it. But I'm not going to shut down until I find something else for the men to do. Can you afford it, Ed? I can, for a while, anyway. And just because the top stratum was salted is no proof there isn't pay dirt further in. Mr. Craig, I wouldn't trade a spavin broomtail range mustang for this whole dang rock pile. And neither would anybody else in their right senses. Wichita. Ed, we both admire you, and we both wish you all the luck in the world. Oh, of course we do. I never said I didn't wish you luck, but you're sure gonna need it. <laughs> Election day was getting close, and Ed Craig's chances looked worse and worse. Out here, the weak and the foolish don't survive long. And in the eyes of the hard-working settlers, Ed looked more than a little foolish. 
Money doesn't come easy to our people. They don't like to see a man throw it away, especially when they don't understand his motives. And Paul Gallagher slandered those motives, even to the men who were benefiting from them. Howdy there, Mr. Rawlinson. Howdy. How'll it be? Whiskey, I guess. Oh, put your money away, my friend. Huh? This is on the house. Why, it's very nice of you, Mr. Gallagher. Is you still working for Craig at the Mary's Pride? That's right. But maybe not for long, huh? Well, I don't know. We sure ain't finding pay dirt, but Craig keeps handing over our wages. Yes, those wages aren't quite as much as you hope to make on the deal. Well, no, but if we make a strike, we're all going to share in the profits. Oh, that Craig is a fast talker. But I'll bet you wouldn't have moved your family down from Globe if you'd known it was for just a few weeks' poor pay. Pardon me for interrupting. But it's been a few months, and it's mighty good pay. Well, Slaughter, are private conversations between my customers and me any concern of yours? When they're derogatory to one of the finest men in the territory, yes. Mr. Slaughter or Mr. Craig's nice enough, but we were led to believe we were going to make a lot of money. I bet you're making more now than you've ever made in your life. How long is it going to last, Slaughter? When the election's over, Craig will shut up that mine like it was a pest house. What makes you think so? Because Craig's not a complete fool. He got stuck with a salted mine. He figured he'd hide it under a big gesture. A gesture that might even get him elected. Then when he got to Washington, he'd make it up in graft. Got any more to say, Gallagher? Only that Arizona folks aren't stupid enough to be taken in by an eastern swindler. I dare you to say that again. Any place except in your own miserable gambling house. Yeah, you heard me this time. No need to chew my cabbage twice. You better come with me, Rollinson. Well, as long as Mr. Gallagher's setting up drinks. Have it your own way. But remember who's setting up the food for your kids. Duke, I don't see what good we're doing, Mr. Craig. By coming out to the mine when he ain't even here. We well, he may be doing a lot of good. Yeah, but the election's day after tomorrow. And the way people are talking, he ain't got a Chinaman's chance to win. Craig knows that too, Wichita. But he wouldn't be nearly as disappointed over losing as he would be to find his miners have let him down. Yeah, appears they ain't doing much mining today. Looks more like they're having themselves a sociable. Well, I'll be... Gallagher's talking to him. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, Gallagher. Oh, I thought I'd be doing you men a favor if I came out and told you what Craig is trying to pull. Now, uh, as for myself, I don't believe he got the assayed samples from this claim at all. I don't believe he paid old Van Ling any $5,000. I think the whole thing was a planned swindle to get him to Washington and to make you pay taxes to a state and the federal government. I told you not to call Craig a swindler again, Gallagher. Now, wait, wait. Wait for what? I'll take that gun, Gallagher. <laughs> and now I'll take you. <laughs> now, boys, as you know, Mr. Craig is campaigning in Prescott. He'll be back for the election, and it doesn't look like he can win. Craig isn't a mining expert. He fell for assaulted claim. I told him so weeks ago, and I guess all Arizona knows it now. But he kept all of you working because he felt a responsibility to you and your families, and for some strange reason because he still has faith in this mine. Maybe that faith boils down to faith in the West and the men who want to live here. Now, what do you say we forget about the election, and when Ed Craig comes home, we'll show him the longest mine tunnel he ever saw, whether there's gold in it or not. I'm going to dig. Wichita's going to dig. How about the rest of you? Yeah! Keep those oil cars coming back, men. We'll keep them filled up. Uh, that was a pretty enticing speech you made, Luke. Huh. When I started swinging this pick, I almost enjoyed it. But now the rock's getting awful hard. Keep swinging anyway. Yeah, but it's so dark gone. Oh, now, now it's soft. Where? Right here, look. Yeah. You see, 
soft and kind of lightish colored. Wichita, this... Get that light in closer. Yeah, yeah. This is silver. Silver? Silver. And it looks like as clean a vein as was ever found in the West. Let's stop in at Gallagher's, man. Yeah, Gallagher. <laughs> Gallagher, we're having a little celebration. Thought you might want to set up a few rounds. You keep out of here, Slaughter, unless you want a warrant for battery slapped on you. Yeah, battery is right. You look like you was run over by a stagecoach. You get out, too. All of you, get out. I don't need your votes. Every vote counts, Gallagher. Sure you don't want to set the boys up? I told you to get out. There's one thing I'd like to settle first. You've been telling these men that Van Ling didn't get $5,000 from Craig for his mine claim. What makes you think that? Well, it... How should I know what Craig paid him? The transaction took place in your establishment. I don't remember everything that goes on here. (laughs) A short memory is a pretty handy thing. I guess you wouldn't remember transferring the claim to Van Ling a month before he sold it to Craig. No, I don't. Do you know enough about territorial government to realize that all mining claim records are filed at Prescott? And are you keeping close enough track of the election to realize that Ed Craig has been campaigning up there? Look, Slaughter, if I gave away a worthless claim and Craig was foolish enough to buy it, it still doesn't involve me. No, of course it don't. Van Ling's the one who gets a hunk of the profit. uh, Did Craig give that poor old coot the same story he gave these men? You ought to know. The only thing you don't know is that we struck silver at the Mary's Pride yeah, today. Sure what? what? That's right, Gallagher. As rich a load as Ed Shiflin's tombstone strike. Oh, Maybe richer. Yes, uh, yeah. Now, no, no, wait a minute. That was my claim. <laughs> I only transferred it to Van Lynn, so he could... Consult it and sell it. Well, boys, we better get to the telegraph office. There's plenty of time before election to let the whole territory know that Ed Craig has made a million dollars strike. And I'll telegraph Craig not to bother looking up any claim records. Gallagher's told us everything we need to know. Fellow citizens of Arizona, there are times when words just can't seem to... Please try to tell them for me, Luke. I think they'd rather tell you, Ed. Boys! How do we feel about our new delegate to the Congress of the United States? Luke Slaughter of Tombstone, starring Sam Buffington, was written by Fran Van Hardisfeld and directed by William N. Robeson. Editorial supervision by Tom Hanley. Supporting Mr. Buffington were Joe DeSantis, Jack Moyles, Barney Phillips, and Junius Matthews. Next week at this time, we return with... Slaughter's the name. Luke Slaughter. When we meet up again, you can call me that. Luke Slaughter. Talk about painting the clouds with sunshine... Today on CBS Radio, Ralph Bellamy, Robert Preston, Judy Holliday, Andy Griffith, Edgar Bergen, Herb Schreiner, Edie Gourmet, Andy Williams, the Ames Brothers, the Ray Charles Singers, and David Rose will all participate in radio's first color extravaganza. Never mind the canvas, forget the brushes. Join these exciting stars and enjoy a new listening experience as they translate music and comedy into color on our two-hour Masland Radio Color Roundup. Later today on most of these same CBS radio stations. (laughs) 